everyone. I had a question in my Facebook group about how to handle one-of-a-kind listings on Etsy because it is a platform that rewards multiple sales and repeat sales of the same item. And the listing quality score is tied into that really heavily. It's hard to get traction with one-of-a-kind items, but there are a few things that you can do if you sell one-of-a-kind or vintage to kind of take advantage of the fact that you can use variations or multiple items in one listing to get that traction for multiple sales. It's a little tricky and you have to be careful with it. But there were suggestions from people in the Facebook group who are dealing with this also, and I thought there were some good ideas. So let's get into this. And so basically if you sell one of a kind or vintage where you only have one of something, it's hard to deal with the Etsy algorithm because it rewards repeat sales. So if one listing sells once, Etsy takes that listing and puts it at the top of search results for a while if there's more than one thing there. But if there's not more than one thing because it's a one-of-a-kind item, then that listing is just gone and Etsy can't show that item in search again. And I will tell you that I sell the same things over and over and over because I make things that I can sell more than one of because as you can see, I make them as they're ordered. But in my vintage shop, you only have one of something. So you can't make it again and again and again. You're not making it. It's just a one-off. There are ways that you can use the same listing, though, to put variations in, and there's a few ways to do that. So the first way would be to take a group of things that are similar. For example, in my um, Etsy vintage shop, I had some wedding cake toppers, some vintage wedding cake toppers. I put a picture, I think there were five of them. I did a picture of five wedding cake toppers for the first listing photo, and each one was its own variation. So when people clicked into the listing, if they bought one, the other four were still available and the listing was still live and it went to the top of search results for a while. And then the second one would sell and it went to the top of search results because there were still three left. And if you have a lot of something, and if you're a vintage seller, start sourcing that one thing. If you find something that sells really well for you, start sourcing that every time you go out looking for things. And then you can use that same listing over and over and over. Now you might want to go in and change the photos if you do that. Because if you sell out of one thing, then a lot of times I will see listings that do this and you go into the listing that says that's sold out. Everything is sold out except for one of them. And that's kind of a disappointment for customers. So you might want to take pictures of each one individually or just take a picture of the four that are left and put that up there. That's up to you, but you definitely can use the variations in that way to group similar things and have an inventory that's higher than one, even if they are one of a kind. Now, if you make one of a kind, there were a couple people in the group who suggested things that you can do to use that same variation idea. And basically you would make something that's similar enough and Michelle suggests turn the one of a kind into something you can regularly make, assuming that the materials are similar enough. So let's say that I make, and her example was wire wrapped jewelry. Okay, I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. This is Michelle's, Michelle's post. If you can write the same description basically for something, but it's different because you wrap the wire in a little bit of a different way, you could put, make five of those, even though if they're a little different, that's fine, and do those as variations. So variation one, and you can link photos to variations on Etsy. So if variation one is linked to the photo of the thing that that person is buying, then they can see very clearly this is the one that you're going to get. And once that sells out, it'll say sold out, but the listing will still be active and it will still go to the top of search for a while. So it does have a listing quality score. And that's the kind of thing that you could reuse forever. So that listing could actually be live forever. Even though you have one of a kind items listed inside that listing, it's something that could live on after something sells. In that same post, Kathy in the Facebook group suggests that you do like a variation of fabric and she sells clothing. So she says she'll list a clothing thing, you know, like whatever she's sewing and have the fabric choice as the drop down. And that way you can change the fabrics out, you can change the pictures. And as long as it's all similar enough, you don't have to change the description, that's, that's fine. It, you have to be careful when you're doing this though. Don't use a listing over just because you're using it over and it's anything. It has to be something that's similar enough that really just one detail or a fabric choice makes the difference but the description itself should be pretty much the same. And this is something that Etsy is very cagey about, and we've gotten different advice over the years, depending on who you talk to. They say, yeah, it's okay to do that, or no, it's not okay to do that. We don't like it when you do that. They've never said you can't do it, but they don't really like it if you're listing things that are gonna be confusing for people. 
So let's say that I come along and I favorite the wire wrapped jewelry listing. And then I come back in two weeks to look at it and it's suddenly a lamp. That makes absolutely no sense. And I probably am gonna wonder why did I favorite this lamp, right? But it's a completely different listing. If, if, it's, this, if it's the same wire wrapped jewelry or it's similar enough, I might not even notice. People don't tend to notice things like that, honestly. So as long as the thing is similar enough that pretty much the description fits and maybe there's one detail that's different just the way that you created something, then that's a really good way to reuse listings and have multiples available so that it's not really a one-of-a-kind listing, even though it's a one-of-a-kind item. Now, Sandra says in the comments on this post, she says that she has two one-of-a-kind shops. One sells upcycle clothing and yoga bags, and then one is a slow stitch shop. So she says for the clothing, she doesn't find a lot of success with the variation method. But what she does find is that listing things helps. And I have found that in my vintage shop also because it's not just the listing quality score that Etsy looks at when they're deciding what to show in search. Part of it is the shop quality score and recency. So if you're listing things in your vintage shop, I think that really does help with the visibility of your shop because when you list something new, Etsy doesn't, it's not that they're giving you a boost, but it, it has like a neutral listing quality score for a while. And Etsy does kind of try it out. Like it'll, it'll look at the keywords and try to show your listing to people who have looked at similar things. So when you continuously add new products, you are going to get higher views. And just in the last week, I have been making an effort to pay attention to my vintage shop because I'm really bad about it. But just listing new things has increased my visits and it's just because I have new keywords floating out there in Etsy and probably those listings are being shown to people who they might not have shown listings in my shop before because those listings are new and Etsy is trying them out on people. So when people look at your listings and they've been getting favorites that means that Etsy is going to give that listing a boost and it will help to get your shop seen overall. So the first thing is variations. The second thing is listing more stuff. Another person in the group, Phyllis, says that she does one of a kind artwork. And what happens is she'll do a painting and then if it sells, she'll do a similar painting and use that same listing to republish it with the new photos. And that's another way to reuse that listing for the listing quality score. And it also is a good way to kind of stock your shop with things that are popular and things that are selling. So if you have the, that is validated that people like that one style or that one subject matter or whatever it is, you can do more of that. And even though they're one of a kind, you can keep the same listing and just reuse it. Again, don't reuse a listing for something that's totally different. And that will mess you up in the Etsy search algorithm. That's one thing, the way that the search algorithm is working right now, you don't want to change it too much because Etsy has categorized that listing as something. It knows who to show it to, or it thinks it does. And you don't want to change it for something that's completely different because that's going to throw everything off. But you can put the same or similar thing in that listing again and republish it and take advantage of the fact that it does have a history to that listing and that it's been proven to sell on Etsy because Etsy will be more likely to show that in search. Another thing that you can do for one-of-a-kind shops is to just encourage people to go to your shop because a lot of people will just search in the search bar, they'll see listings, they'll go to that listing, then they bounce out. But if you try to keep people in your shop by either putting infographic photos that say, see more bracelets here and go to my homepage or something like that. You can't link, that's the problem with Etsy is you can't link from photos. You can link in the description of the item though and if they can find it, then they can click that link and go to a section in your shop or to your shop's homepage. But if you put an infographic in the pictures, because a lot of people, like I said, they don't look at the description or Etsy just makes it really hard to find, but they will look at the photos. So if you do that, then people will say, oh, there's more of this. And if they like the style, they might go to that section or they might go to your shop's homepage and actually check out the other things that you have. That's what's going to get you more sales if you get more activity in your shop. So anything that you can do to get more activity on a listing or more activity in your shop is really going to help one of a kind shops. And it's, it's just hard to fight the Etsy algorithm, but there are ways around it. So if you have ideas that I haven't gone over, because these are all pretty basic, the Etsy algorithm is very difficult to deal with when you're one of a kind. That's just it. So you have to think of ways to make your shop not be as one of a kind 
so that when a listing sells, it's just never there again. You still have to keep on track though and not expand your listings too much because of the way that the search algorithm works and how it categorizes things. So leave me any questions. And if you have ideas, please post them in the comments. Like if there's things that you do that help your sales on in one of a kind shops, I will talk to you later.